Good morning, guys, and welcome to another episode of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments with me, your host, Richard Beckson. Um, for anyone that's listening in, I turned 40 yesterday, so the big 4-0. I know uh, I look a little bit older than that, but that's what years of stress do to you, yeah. salespeople and construction. Um, anyway, today it's going to be an exciting podcast. We've got Carrie Beal coming on here. I've known Carrie for a while. He's been living in Costa Rica since June, and I thought it would be good to focus a little bit more on kind of living and relocating here, especially with families. So you probably saw that in the last podcast that we had with Aaron Banachek there, that was more kind of working and kind of living here. But we're going to get an idea from someone that's just moved here um, from uh, the Atlanta area. So we'll be discussing that with Carrie there. Uh, also, exciting news, guys. Got two new members coming on to the team as well. Um, have um, en an engineer um, and also project manager, um, Eric. Uh, so it's very exciting. We've got quite a few projects we're working on. We're just helping clients kind of pull everything together. Uh, and also, of course, trust but verify uh, on quite a few things. Very important as well when we come to looking at land and also kind of developing land for helping clients there. And also when it comes to, you know, building, just making sure that we can find solutions for certain things on the land. Uh, again, we're not a construction company, uh, but we do kind of do a bit of kind of handholding throughout the whole process from finding land all the way to making sure you guys get your final product as well. Uh, and then also we've got Daniel coming on in a couple of weeks as well. So it's great news. Thanks very much for everybody for their support. Um, I'm very thankful to you guys for everyone uh, there uh, and hope everyone is enjoying these podcasts as well. We've had quite a few people reaching out um, and thank you very much for all the reviews, the thumbs up guys. Uh, um, it's uh, it's very nice to, to see that. We're on episode 73 now, and I'm sure we'll be at 100 very, very soon. I'm trying to pick up the pace a little bit here and give you at least two or three a week here. Um, sometimes I have to rack my brain of what we're going to be talking about. But anyway, so again, as I mentioned today, we'll be speaking to Carrie, kind of more of a focus here on schooling, banking, kind of living here, owning a car, et cetera. Uh, and also some of maybe some of the expenses here that maybe you didn't think about. But if anybody wants to reach out to us here, you can at info at investing, Costa Rica .com. That's info at investing, I N V E S T I N G, Costa Rica .com. Um, And anyway, let's get straight into it, guys. Good morning, Carrie. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you. How are you? Very, very good, sir. It's quite a town that you've got going on there. Yeah, working on it, working on it, moving <laughs> in the right direction. My, my gray hair makes it look darker. That's what it is. It, exa yeah, I've, I've got <laughs> yeah. some of that as well. I got some of that. I mean, I think that's the one thing that people don't tell you about moving to Costa Rica is that you'll definitely get a tan. Yes, agreed. So, I love it. Exactly. Well, I mean, you've been down here since June. Am I correct in saying? That's exactly correct. Moved here in June from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Wow, that's a bit of a uh, bit of one extreme to the other, right? From the Atlanta city down here to the to Costa Rica, two totally different ways of life, and loving it down here. Awesome, awesome. Well, I mean, as you mentioned, you've been in Costa Rica for a while. Um, let's just talk about the last six months. I mean, what has been the biggest change that you've seen in the past six months, Gary? Yeah, you know, the biggest change I've seen is you know in the real estate market. Just uh, the amount of people wanting to come down here. The availability has, uh, you know, when we were looking a year ago to move down here, there was a lot of options. And now, you know, we're, we're renters. So yep. we're looking for places to stay for six months or a year. And the availability is just a lot less. Um, great options, but you're paying a little bit more for what you were paying back a year ago, six months ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I think we're only going to probably continue to see that, you know, as a lot of people. Um, and also, again, you know, as Canada opens up as well, we're going to see this flood of Canadians moving down here as well as like, I think the US has already started, but we're about to see a few more Canadians coming down here which I think is probably going to drive it even more because, you know, they can't bring product online, you know, quick enough that the amount of people coming down here. So it's only going to drive rental rates probably up. So fair enough. I mean, what advice would you give to anyone looking to find a, a rental? I mean, how to find them, you know, is there much negotiation in the price? I mean, you've been through it probably a couple of times. So what, what would your advice be on that front? Yeah, it's all about your network. It's, you know, finding stuff online is very tough. Um, you know, I don't want to say it's not existent. You can find yeah. something online, but it's all about who you know and your connections, boots on the ground, knowing people, having relationships and consistently following up. Because if you call somebody a month ago and they don't have something, they're not going to call you back and tell you they uh -huh. found something in a month. You're going to have to call them back every, obviously you don't want to call them every day or every couple of days, but you're going to have to call them back every couple of weeks and just check in because when new product comes available, you got to be top of mind. Well, I know you have a great network down here, Kerry. You're like a social butterfly. So, uh, so yeah, it's, I'm sure it will be pretty easy for you when you need to find your next place. But let, let's talk about, you know, kind of just about what 
I mean, what is the, you know, one, one thing or maybe a few things that you, you think that people should be aware of when moving to Costa Rica that maybe they're not aware of at the moment? Yeah, of course. So when we came down here, you know, fast paced life, moving 300 miles an hour and, you know, come to Costa Rica, everything just slows down and it slows down in a good way. Um, but at the same time, you know, I heard the saying before I came and I didn't really think about it much. And it was basically Costa Rica is not going to change for you. You got to change for Costa Rica. Yep. And now that I'm living here, it's very true. Um, you got to adapt. You got to get used to it. When you go to a restaurant, my daughter always says, don't go there when you're hungry. Go there when you're thinking about you might want to eat in a few hours because, <laughs> you know, the food could take, you know, 30 minutes. It could take an hour. It could take two minutes. I mean, it depends. But then to get the bill at the end, when you're done, you 15, 20 minutes to get the bill because everything's slow, but it's it's relaxed and it's on a purpose. So you can spend time and quality time enjoying each other. But it's a slow pace in a good way. How difficult was it for you to make that adjustment? I mean, again, you said that you were moving at 300 miles an hour. And I mean, I think a lot of people are looking to get out of that, you know, uh, traveling at 300 miles an hour, and maybe come down to 30 miles an hour. I mean, how difficult was that transition for you? It, it, it took me a few months. Um, and I could tell you, you know, if we have three kids and everybody in our family adjusted a little bit differently. Yep. Um, you know, my wife, you know, hopped in and she was adjusted a lot faster than I did. Uh, my kids, I'd say two adjusted pretty quickly and one was a little bit slower. But at the end of the day, you know, I'd say probably about 60 days for us to realize like, OK, this is a good way of life. This is, a, you know, let's not be in 50 places at 50 times. Like, let's just slow down, enjoy, enjoy the ocean, enjoy, you know, where we are. And I would say it took us about me personally, 60 days. OK, OK. Well, it was pretty quick, though. I mean, 60 days to adjust. I mean, it's, it's pretty it's pretty good there. Um Let's talk, you know, um, a lot of people are looking to move down here with kids as well. You know, they're looking to relocate with their families. I mean, what advice would you potentially give them when they're looking to move with families? So number one thing I would say is, and I apologize if there's noise in the background, I'm outside and uh, somebody just decided to start cutting some grass I, next to no, me. I got a train passing by here in the city anyway, so. Excellent. So number one advice I'd give to people moving down with families is identify the school first. Yep. Identify, because for us and most families, school is the top most important thing. There's several good options. And, you know, we're in the Guanacaste area and there's Korea, which my, my kids attend and it's awesome and it's great and have nothing but good things to say about it. But then also not every kid fits in every single situation. So there's La Paz, there's Tide, there's Journey. There's lots of good schools. I would identify the school first and then figure out from there because without the school, you know, where do you end up? Where do you live? You know, you want to live close to your school. So I would look in the school, figure out the school area. And then another thing I'd say, if you're moving the family is this is a huge thing to us, connect with people before you come, make friends before you come. We are fortunate enough to connect our friends, or connect our kids with lots of people before we came through Facebook, through Facebook groups. And our kids, when we came down here, they must have had five to seven friends each wow. before we got here. And when we landed day one, we had plans. We were yeah. going out with other families. We, it wasn't like we had to go meet new people and get new people. And that was huge for us to be able to, you know, have those connections instantly. Yeah, I think a lot of people are always worried about, like, when they move down here, how are they going to build that community? How are they going to get that friend network? You know, they're very concerned about that. And to an extent, I think, again, it's not something that's just going to come to you. You need to work at it as well. Um, you know, and I think making those connections prior is good as well, but also is, you know, just... I suppose, asking people around for coffee and, and, you know, you have to create that community there and, and, and put some effort into it because again, it's not just going to like fall on you. Yeah. So a hundred percent agree. So I created this WhatsApp group with all the new families we we're meeting and talking to, and there's probably about 25 to 30 families that we all landed in Costa Rica within call it a 90 day period, you know, June, July, August of last year. And it's excellent. Now I have 25 families that are on this group. I can send one message like, hey, we're all going to meet at this place. And, you know, maybe five families will come, maybe two families will come, maybe 10 families will come. Yeah. It's a nice way to just, like you said, you have to be proactive. You have to get out there, get to meet people, get to talk to people. And every everybody that we met is in a similar situation as us. They want to get away from the fast pace. They wanted to meet new people. So it's it's been very rewarding. Awesome. Awesome. Just jumping back to schools a little bit. I mean, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm moving to Costa Rica. It's kind of a developing country. How is the quality of the schools there? You know, what will happen then when my kids, I don't know, are 16, 17, 18, and they maybe want to go to college in the US. Like, what's your opinion on that? I mean, how, how good are the schools here? Yeah, so we have three kids. 
that are all turning, they'll be 11, 13, and 15. Okay. So they're in fifth, seventh, and ninth grade. And that was a top concern for us. We come down to another country, weather schooling's not well. Um, you know, we're very big on getting good education for our kids. And we've been very pleased. Um, you know, like I said earlier, we're, our kids go to CREA, which is a U.S. accredited school through Virginia. And the quality of schooling is excellent. Uh, the kids have been very happy, challenged. I could say on a positive note, the homework has been lighter than the U.S., but we like that. I, mean, uh, I agree. Some people might not like that. It's been great for us. And just, you know, we, we feel very strongly that our kids are going to get good education. Yeah, I, I agree on the homework thing. I mean, it's, it's I even see, you know, um, we took our daughter out of a school when she first started just because the amount of homework. And I was like, wow, she doesn't even have a chance to play and be a kid. I mean, you've only got that one opportunity in, in you know, in your life. You've got the rest of your life to learn, you know, to do homework. But also is those learning skills that they're going to have while also playing and, you know, I suppose, you know, playing with other kids and all that communication and social, you know, kind of skills that they're going to learn is you're not going to get that from homework. So I think it's important to have that, have that balance, but jumping quickly to fees for private schools. I mean, what range are people looking at? Would you say for fees here for private schools in, in, in Costa Rica? Yeah. So, you know, I am familiar with a few schools. I can yep. tell you particularly for CREA, it depends on the age of the kid, but you're looking all in probably around $9,000 a year. Okay. Um, and it is a range. It's anywhere from seven to 10, depending on yep. if your you know, kids are younger or older, but I'd say about $9,000 per kid. And then there's a discount if you pay early, but you know, compared to us private schools, I'm saving a lot of money. Let's say that. I'm sure. I'm sure. And I mean, with other schools in the area, how does CREA um, compare to like La Paz, Educarte, all those other ones? So it's very, they're very comparable. There's a okay. few that are less expensive. Um, you know, I looked at journey. I looked at a couple other schools and they're, you know, call it seven, eight, nine. Um, yep. But they're all within the range, I would say, from six on the low end yep. to ten on the high end. Okay, that's great. That's great. Again, yeah, cheaper than the, the cheaper than the uh, the US, the UK, and Canada. I'm sure for private schools, so. a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. You and I have discussed a couple of times about owning a car here that you don't need anything that luxurious. There's no keeping up with the Joneses because anyone, anytime anyone sees a Porsche driving on the road, like a Porsche Cayenne, it's like, look at that idiot. Uh, no offense to any Porsche Cayenne owners, of course, but here yes. in Costa Rica, there's just no need for it. But I mean. Explain how like you went about choosing one, the journey, like your journey of buying a car here and what advice and kind of you would have for people and what models to buy. Of course. So I heard a saying when I came here, cars come to Costa Rica to die. Um, and you don't want to get a car that's been on the beach for a while due to the you know, salt water and all that. So it's very important to buy you know, a car that's been in San Jose or away from the beach because they come to the water to die. So when I originally came here, I was like, I need a nice car. I've always driven nice cars and quickly realized that doesn't make any sense. So from my experience, my knowledge, I've been told there's three different kinds of cars, you know, to get. It's either a Toyota, Mitsubishi or Hyundai. I'm sure there's lots of other ones. Um, the reason why those three that I've been told is they're very easy to fix. If yep. something goes wrong, you don't have to worry about a part coming from the U.S. and waiting several weeks and you know, the costs are a lot more expensive. Uh, so we use the local broker. I found a local broker. He went out to the car. He inspected the car. He made sure everything was working. And he even gave a guarantee to the car, um, which was outstanding. Wow. I've had nothing but good luck with it. Knock on wood. I've sent him multiple people that have been super happy. I'm obviously happy to share his information. You know, if anybody wants to contact me or you, I'll share his information. But I would say get a local broker or get a mechanic to check out the car. Do not buy a car sight unseen yep. without it being looked at. I agree. I agree. Well, I mean, I always say to people, look, just buy basically Korean or Japanese cars here. Don't go with American cars or European cars because, yeah, my wife had a Renault Clio once and oh my God. Um, yeah. You know, I've only owned Nissan and Mitsubishi since I've been here. I actually just, the company just bought a new car, a Mitsubishi. So uh, we'll, it's the first Mitsubishi we've had here, but let's let's talk i think that's great advice on the car there um you know i mean i suppose it's like a minnesotan said to me the other day they go to texas to buy their cars never buy a minnesotan car just because the little yeah. road destroys it underneath so, so. I, I also bought a, a golf cart um which i love and it makes us feel like even though this is not a vacation because we live here yep. i feel like i'm on vacation every day because i'm driving my golf cart loving it <laughs> um and it's been a big I, I bought it before i came and it's been the best purchase i've had since i've been here Nice. Well, there you heard it, guys. Get a golf cart when you move to Costa Rica. I mean, it's great for just right. going to the shops and stuff, right? 
So let's talk about opening a bank account here, uh, because a lot of people ask about that. Is it necessary? You know, uh, et cetera. Uh, I mean, what is your advice on, on opening a bank account here? So for me particularly, I have not opened a local bank account. I was going to, I was planning on it, but I, you know, I have a bank account in the U.S. with Wells Fargo. I started using it here. And within 60 days, I realized that was a mistake. The fees are expensive. The international fees are expensive. The wiring fees are expensive. Everything. Love Wells Fargo. I've been a member for years, but internationally, it just did not make sense. So a friend of mine told me about Charles Schwab yep. and you can do it all online. The fees are like minimal or zero. And I switched all everything over to uh, Charles Schwab and it's been a home run. My fee, uh, my fees, if I need to wire money are pennies. Um, ATM fees are zero. Wow. It's transaction fees are zero. Um, you know, I'm a huge Charles, Charles Schwab fan, which I didn't even know about it prior to a year ago, but or six months ago, but uh, I've been very happy with using my U S banks and had zero issues with it. Well, I think that's great feedback for anyone that's looking here, open account with Charles Schwab. I don't really, if you're a Canadian listening, you can, uh, another option a lot of people keep talking about is wise.com. It used to be called TransferWise. It's now wise.com. You get yourself like a card and I think you can take up to a certain amount with no ATM fees as well. Um, and you can kind of transfer money between and, and, and whatever. But yeah, I mean, I don't think it's necessary to open a bank account here. Uh, and if you do, like if, you're, if you are a non-resident, it's very, very difficult to open one. Uh, if you have a corporation here, of course, that you can. I'm about to go Monday and open up another bank account for a corporation, uh, which was a pain in the butt. But like I had to project cash flow for a year and I'm like, like it's a brand new business. I'm like, okay. And the, C the CPA was just like, just make up some numbers, Rich. Don't worry. Um, I'm like, okay. I just feel like I'm just ticking a box here. But anyway, Let let's talk about living expenses here a little bit. I mean, what is expense that you didn't think that you'd that you'd have when moving to Costa Rica? Like, you know, what like what was the positive expenses that surprised you? What was the stuff that you thought was more expensive? What were the shocks? Um, yeah, I mean, give yeah. us an idea on, on the expense front here, just so that people kind of listening in here are just aware of like any surprises they may have, good and bad. Of course, my overall expense from living here compared to the US has dropped significantly. Um, however, there are some things that are more expensive. As we mentioned earlier, the rental rates are, you know, and don't get me wrong, I'm living on the ocean. I look two blocks and I see the beautiful ocean to my right. and I've got a beautiful view. You can find rental rates a lot less expensive, but we chose, we want to be on the water. We want to be close to the water. So the rental rates are a little bit higher. Um, in regards to food, grocery shopping, we're, we're trying to, you know, the grocery shopping has been a little more expensive because we're buying a lot of foods we're used to. Yep. Um, when you start buying the local foods and you start getting, you know, getting items from here, it would be less expensive, but we're, 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 we're adjusting slowly, but it, it was a little shock to see how expensive the local, you know, not local, the foods I'm used to yep. are. Um, other items, you know, the car, you know, yes, it was more, a lot more expensive here than the US, the car, but you're buying a lot less expensive car. You know, if I'm buying, yep. I'm not buying a $40,000 car in the US and buying it here, it's, but it's, you know, I'd say 50% higher for the cars, but we're buying a cheaper car. So it works out. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't have any heating expenses, right? I mean, I suppose at the beach there you have air conditioning, but, uh, you know, there's no, yeah, winter heating expenses or clothes. You only have one set of clothes. Like you don't need yeah. winter and... That, that's correct. We bought way too many clothes down. Um, you know, if I could go back in time and reduce the quantity of clothes we brought, I would. Um, you know, the good thing is I'm donating a lot of the clothes to the local communities and stuff because I have way too much. Uh, how, many, I, how many times have you put a sweater on since you've been in Costa Rica? One time in the rainforest okay. um, when we went. Yeah, you never, you never. I mean, it's, it's beautiful weather all day, um, every day. You know, the, yeah. the one thing I will say, though, the one expense that I don't have is, you know, the, the shopping where you go to the Target and you go to the mall and you do the Amazon and you do all that stuff and that stuff that you need. But do you really need it? And we literally do zero of it now. We don't do we don't do that. It's not an option here. And the amount of money we're saving from that is in, a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, I mean, anyone, I think you've answered this question, but I mean, I, anyone looking for to make Costa Rica their home, I mean, what would be the, you know, the main advice that you would give them? Um, I mean, I think you mentioned there a little about the culture of making sure that you can adjust to that, because I think if you're an uptight person and you want that kind of fast moving up, like this is the, not the right country for that. Um, I mean, what about the language as well, Gary? Yeah. So, you know, I don't know Spanish. I want to learn Spanish. I'm trying to learn Spanish. I think it's important if you live down here to know Spanish, but if you don't, you can still survive. And the people here are very nice and will 
try to figure out a way you can download Google Translate and use that as a barrier. Um, you know, the, but the one thing I would say about moving down here is if you're going to move here is come and touch and feel and see. For me, I don't want to live somewhere that I've never been before. Yeah. Spend time in the communities you might want to be in. Go spend a little time, get to know the neighborhood and don't come on a vacation. Come with a sense of like, hey, could I see myself living here. It's a totally different kind of, you know, vacation or a totally different kind of visit when you're actually thinking about, do I want to live here? Do you think it's better that they stay in an Airbnb rather than a hotel? The hotel operators are going to kill me here, all the hotel owners. But do you think it's better that they stay in an Airbnb just to get more of like what it would be like to live in a property that they could potentially live in rather than a resort hotel? 100%. I mean, love hotels. I support hotels. We travel at hotels all the time. But if you're coming to Costa Rica to live, you do not want to stay in a hotel. You want to stay in Airbnbs. You want to stay in a house. You want to stay in a condo because... The reality is you want to get to know your neighbors. You want to get to know the people that are here in the community and you can't do that with a hotel. Yeah. yeah. What is, I mean, you, again, it, you've traveled around quite a bit here in Costa Rica. I mean, where, where is your favorite place to go? I, I love the Manuel Antonio. Um, I thought it was a great area. Lots of, uh, lots of great things to see. The National Park, the, it's got the ocean there, lots of wildlife. Um, I also love where I live. I think we landed in a great spot. I mean, we landed in Guanacosta, Reserva Conchel, and it's a beautiful neighborhood, great community. Uh, but there's a lot of good areas around here too, Tamarindo and Mar Vista. And, and just for us, this feels like home. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad that you've, uh, as I like to say, found your tribe. Um, so if my last question for you, uh, if you inherited $500,000 and had to invest it into a business or real estate in Costa Rica, what would you do with it and why? That's a good question. You're making me think. Um, I think I would do something with the travel industry industry because so many people are coming here on vacation, wanting to see it. And I'm passionate about helping people. I'm passionate about showing people a good time. And I would, you know, invest my money to, you know, give back to the community, but also to show people that are visiting this beautiful, you know, country, you know, the great things that they could see. So, so somewhere in the travel industry. What businesses do you think are missing in your area? Like, is there enough storage? Is there a dry cleaners? You know, I mean, what stuff is not there that you think that, that potentially there's an opportunity for? Yeah, um, you know, it's, I have a lot of, lot of things that I think of. I think about a car wash. There's a lots of car washes, but if you want a car wash here, it takes an hour plus, yeah. you know, to have a quick car wash, it could take five minutes and you pay whatever the price is. That would be very convenient, very easy. There's no fast food in the area I live in, which I'm not a big fast food either but at the same time there's a big demand for fast food uh there's no dry cleaners which i don't necessarily know how great they would be but even a, a place to take your clothes and you have a whole you know regular laundry mat there's yeah. none of that around here so you know I, I could go on and on and on about different businesses missing but that's the charm of costa rica not having all those little things that you think you need yeah i agree i agree you know i mean the convenience of living here we have the convenience that you wake up every morning the sun shines and it's warm so uh yeah, and I said to someone sometimes, the sun gets boring sometimes. Seeing that variation in weather is sometimes nice. Yeah, for sure. I, I would add, you know, with going back to about the part with families and kids, being here different than, uh, you know, Atlanta or the U.S., is my kids are very active with surfing, with sailing, with kayaking, with being on the water, with enjoying outside and meeting friends. And, you know, they come home after school and they go. You know, they, we get home at 3 o'clock from school and they're like okay we'll see you later and they're gone gone in a fun way and yep. we feel they're safe we're in a community that 100 percent there's no issues of safety or are they going to be okay yes we tell them we want them to be back before sundown or communicate with us but they're playing tennis here we went jet skiing the other day we went uh, kayaking i mean it's just the amount of activities in a good way for kids to get out and engage with other kids is super healthy and to put away the cell phones is what we're focused on yeah, I mean, that's the big thing at the moment, trying to escape technology, right? Um, I think that's the biggest challenge we probably have with our kids is getting them, you know, kind of off that, uh, off, off, off that uh, addiction to, uh, to technology. So, um, yeah, I mean, Costa Rica definitely is the place. I mean, I think if you want a better quality of life uh, and not so much of, I suppose, a rat race or, you know, getting on the treadmill, you know, things slow down here a little bit, you know, it has its pros and also its cons, but I think the pros far outweigh the cons. And I mean, as you said there, I think it's an amazing place to bring up kids. I mean, you know, I'm from the UK, my wife is Costa Rican, you know, we talked about, you know, moving to Europe and we were like, why would we? I mean, like life here is amazing. Yeah, we you came know. uh in June. We saw her come for one year from June to June. And now we sat down with the family a couple of weeks ago 
and the family, you know, we said, do you guys want to stay? And we, you know, we're all about making sure our kids are ha happy, healthy, safe, good schooling. And we want to make sure they're all on the same page because the last thing we want is for four of us to be happy and one of us not to be happy. Yeah. So we said, if anybody's not happy at any time, we're done with it a year. So we sat down with all of them a couple of weeks ago and we said, okay, this is the time. Do we want to stay for another year? Yes or no. And all my kids are like, like a hundred percent. Yes. They want to stay. Yeah. I don't know how any could, kid could ever say no here in Costa Rica. I mean, there's just so much to see and do. And yeah, so well, Kerry, I'll not take up much more of your time. I really appreciate you taking the time and giving this information. Um, and as I mentioned there, I'll put your contact details in the description below, uh, just in case if anybody wants to kind of reach out to you uh, and get some information. I know you're a good, you're a great giver of inf information. So, so uh, always so. happy to help. And I appreciate you having me on here. No, not at all. I really appreciate you. Have a great weekend. Awesome. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Great podcast there with Carrie Beal, guys. All of his contact details are in the description below. And I hope that was able to kind of clear up some questions that I know a lot of people had. A lot of people are looking to move to Costa Rica that have families and also with kids. They're asking a lot about education, safety, uh, and also making friends and having community down here. You know, I always kind of... Uh, giggle sometimes when people ask about community and friends in here in Costa Rica, because you'll probably find that you'll end up with more of them here than you would do, uh, you know, back home, just because again, the people here are very friendly. And there's a lot of families uh, and people in the same situation that you are, are kind of looking to, you know, create that community and find that community. So really don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, if anybody wants any help with anything, uh, as I said, moving here, investing here, uh, just let us know. Uh, again, our email address is info at investingcostarica.com, uh, info at investingcostarica.com. We do everything from finding land, guiding people. We are not realtors. We do more of a consultative approach to this uh, so that we're on your side of the transaction, helping you, whether that's buying land and looking at like, you know, how it lies, its setbacks, rivers, um, what it can be used for, what you can build on it, et cetera, all the way through to kind of moving here, running a business, tax structures, um, building a home here, advice on that, or buying property and kind of holding yourself, holding your hands through that closing process. Or if you're looking to make an investment, you know, vacation rentals, uh, the best way to do that, good property management companies, you know, really start from finish there. Uh, more of a, as I said, they're a kind of, we're more of a middleman of kind of pulling everything together, uh, having had, you know, over 17 years of experience here in Costa Rica. So you can contact us info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. Um, thanks very much for listening, guys. Have a great weekend.